for TTN HD Production Live, here with producer, writer, Steve Crozier, who's worked on NCIS, Castle, currently you're working on Femme Fatale. How did you get into the business? Let's see, I started uh, in TV, I started in television, and I worked as a production assistant on Blossom, oh. which a lot of people, yeah, I started as a, a PA. On the 90s. I was in this, started in the 90s, that's right, so I'm dating myself, in the 90s, back in the 90s when there was no internet, and we probably couldn't even do this type of interview without some giant camera, you got the small, ca I mean, people might think they have a giant camera back there, it looks like a regular photo camera. Just giving I'm our giving secrets away. away. The secrets. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I started as a PA on Blossom, and I blossomed into a writer-producer just overnight, it's really that easy. No, but my, uh, working as a PA, you gotta get exposure to everyone on the show, and you know, when I wasn't Xeroxing scripts or picking up my MB Alex lunch, I, I was uh, reading a lot of the scripts that, that the writers were doing, and I kind of liked their lifestyle. And I, I didn't have any training in, in college uh, writing. Uh, I went to University of Wisconsin, great school, but I didn't. There was no. Uh, I wasn't really sure about the entertainment business, so I had the exposure on the show, and I, you know, thought, hey, working as a writer this looks like a cool lifestyle. They kind of come. They come in kind of later in the day, and I like the creative end of it. So. Um, you know, I focused on that and I started, what got me in was I wrote an X-Files spec script, which got me my first agent. And at the time, if you would, uh, wanted to get into TV writing, you would write an existing show that was sort of well-known and critically acclaimed. And I loved the X-Files, so I wrote a, a spec X-Files that kind of got me uh, my first agent and uh, my first job, which was on Sliders, which is a show on Fox. And what's your writing process? Where do you get your inspiration? Well, I can't reveal all my secrets, but you know, I, I used to love watching uh, TV in the '80s. You know, I grew up watching Knight Rider and, and Magnum PI, and uh, you know, Greatest American Hero, and, and I love The Twilight Zone too. Which is, if we get into Femme Fatales, I could talk more about the anthology series. So, you know, I, I was always, you know, knew about TV, and uh, you know, there's only maybe 11 original ideas. So, if you kind of figure out ways of doing variations on those 11 original ideas, you could kind of have a career out of out of doing a TV writing. But, you know, so, so I always was interested in TV, and what was great for me is, uh, you know, shows like uh, Knight Rider and stuff like that, and, and, and Magnum P.I. Like, I was familiar with a lot of names, you know, in the credits, like Glenn A. Larson or Donald P. Belisario. A lot of these guys use their middle initial. Stephen J. Canal, who I've worked with all of them, you know, in, in, in my writing career, which is great. Stephen J. Canal, I worked with on Castle. He was an actor, passed away recently, but, you know, very prolific. Uh, Don Belisario, I worked with on NCIS, and Glenn Larson, I worked on uh, on a show called Nightman, which is a syndicated show that was shot in Vancouver, actually, Canada. So it was kind of cool to work, to put bases with these names that I'd known, and then to come work as a writer producer on, on their on their shows. So that was pretty cool. So, but where I come up with the ideas, it's just I think you just either have it or you don't. Like coming up with with different ideas for shows, you know, uh, shows last longer than movies. You know, you have to come up with maybe 22 episodes a season. So. As long as you could kind of generate, you know, you know, a lot of times you could take stuff ripped from the headlines and do your variation on it, or just, you know, get to know the characters of the show. Cause it's really about characters. All the, all the shows you work on, it's about the characters. So. Do you find you get attached to your characters? I mean, some of them, you know, when you work on a show for a few seasons, you kind of, you know, fall in love with the characters and stuff like that. Or if you don't, you could always kill them off. You know, certain shows like like characters get killed off for, you know, a, a lot of a variety of reasons. You might be. You know, I think I'm not gonna say what show it is. Difficult actor. A sh exactly. Like there's certain shows I know that actors was difficult, and uh, you know I'm saying on, on Sliders, for example, there was an sh uh, actor who was difficult and he was killed off. You know. Easy peasy. Yeah. So, but you know, it's uh, I grew up reading a lot of comic books, and you kind of uh, that also is TV sort of like you know that in a sense that it's the same characters you know in different stories. So. Uh, if the audiences don't love the characters, like part of the reason NCIS is so successful is, is people love all those characters. Mm -hmm. They might be not that into like procedural stuff, but, but uh, the character comedy and, and the interaction between the family nexus of the characters in NCIS, like audiences, they love that. So, you know, as a writer, you, you kind of have to like to work in that, that uh, field, you know. Tell me a bit more about Femme Fatale and how you like working on that show. So Femme Fatales is a half hour anthology show that's on Cinemax. It's a late night show, so there's a little sexy element to it, which is not that big a deal because all the premium cable channels have, you know, there's nudity and stuff and, and, and you know, and language. And they show more violence, I guess. But uh, that's, you know, that's kind of like real life. So Femme Fatales is an anthology show, half hour. And we just finished the second season, which will air in May, mm -hmm. the end of May. And it's probably the most creative freedom I've had, where it's, uh, we could do any type of story. You know, it's like the Twilight Zone, so we introduce new characters and new situations each week. And there's usually a, 
you know, uh, with a strong female protagonist, hence femme fatales. She may be a black widow. She could find a, be a, 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 you know, a meek individual who kind of becomes a femme fatale throughout the course of the episode. And you know, the second season we've really expanded. We've done like a superhero episode, a sci-fi episode. A lot of them are noir influenced. Um, a lot of the ones that I've done are a little more grindhouse style. You know, I like. I think you know if Quentin Tarantino, or Robert Rodriguez tuned into Femme Fatales, they would think like, oh, this is really cool what we're doing. And you know, we shoot it here in L.A. We've done two seasons of 13 episodes, and uh, every they're all different, you know, but they have the same sort of cool look, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, and like there's a twist and there's like a crime caper. So in terms of writing, I've always written for, except if it's an original pilot, there are uh, established characters. Where on this, we come up with everything new, so they're like little short, short films. So. Great. And is there a website? Do you have your own personal website that we can check out? Or? I don't have my own personal website, but I guess you can find me on Facebook. And IMDb as well? Yes, definitely check me out on IMDb because it's so accurate on there, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much and best of luck with your upcoming project. All right. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'm Katie Allman reporting for TTNHD Production Live. Oh.